So, Walid, well, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, 30 years, Band Group has been in the market now in the UAE and the Middle East. Um, we're going to come to that in a little while, but first of all, uh, you've been exhibiting at Materials Handling Middle East since the very first edition many years ago. You're back again in 2019. What have been the latest developments at SPAN since the last edition of Materials Handling Middle East? First of all, thank you for uh, joining us today. The last two years were very exciting. Many changes. Main ones are an increased level of automation. Okay. I would say an increased level of micro automation in the marketplace. The first finding over the last two years is that automation will come sooner than expected to our part of the world, despite lower real estate costs or lower uh, manpower costs. And in terms of micro-automation, that's actually the first time I've heard of that ter term before. Um, how do you define micro-automation and what exactly is that? Micro-automation, some people term it as mobile automation, is the use of uh, robotic tools, smart trolleys, rather than fixed automation where you use mainly ASRS machines or multi-shuttle machines. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a flexible type of software dom dominated tools that help the person rather than replacing the operator, helping, be, helping the warehouse operator being more productive. Mm -hmm. okay. When we're talking about uh, industries that SPAN serves, obviously uh, anything to do with warehouse and supply chain logistic solutions, um, in terms of, I think, e-commerce is one particular industry that has really kind of taken off in the market recently. Um, would you care to elaborate on that? Sure. Uh, the biggest uh, part of our business is with either e-commerce companies or with traditional distribution organizations setting up their electronic commerce operations. This is, this is now a fact. And I believe that this, is a, that this is a fact that will be here to remain. Whether you, you distribute or you sell groceries, garments, electronics, or even white or brown goods. Mm. 30 years in the market, congratulations. Uh, three, three decades, it's certainly a long time in the market. Um, you have obviously been through the ups and downs of economic cycles, uh, all businesses are impacted. But um, in the logistics landscape, since you started, three decades ago to now, how has it evolved and how has it changed? I, I will dare to say everything has evolved. Uh, it has been 30 exciting years. People have evolved. The uh, quality, the skills of warehouse personnel, from basic duties at the warehouse, like housekeeping or forklift driving, up to logistics, strategic logistics management has changed. The word logistics was invented during the, the 30 years, the word supply chain management was invented. So we are now a science. We are now a reality. And with all modesty, we are all behind the driving wheel now. Mm. Mm. Amazon is a logistics company. Future opportunities, let's talk about uh, automotive, groceries, um, third party logistics. Where do you see the kind of future for SPAN? 3PL is here to stay. Uh, Third-party logistics are providing services that organizations would rather avoid to do. Mm. But they have to adapt to what the organization wants. And we spoke a couple of years ago about the fragmentation in the business, about the speed factor, etc. Mm. Uh, 3PL companies have, are the early ones who've started to adapt their space, their people, and their equipment to service um, modern commerce, whether it's uh, electronic or still traditional. In terms of uh, tendencies that we see to come, further fragmentation, acute fragmentation, and more and more importance to speed and velocity. So the end users, the customers becoming more demanding, they want quicker speed, they want exactly. delivery on time. It's getting more and more challenging, I guess, for... Correct, yeah, correct. But again, we've seen quickly evolvement, we've seen quickly uh, situations where we go to a certain stated state. For example, we now on, on a couple of projects, I can't uh, unfortunately specify where they are or, or for whom, uh, that are of the uh, click and collect nature. Mm -hmm. okay. So you order online and you pick it up from a certain location. Mm -hmm. This uh, relieves uh, the, your vendor from last mile issues. 
and last mile is still the most important challenge facing e-commerce. Mm. And some statistics say, at least as far as groceries are concerned, uh, half of the transactions will be delivered to destination and half will be delivered to picking stations. Why do you think that is? So, so the, the, the consumer buys online, but they prefer to collect instead. Is that because they, I guess they have more control about when they actually receive their items? Exactly. exactly. And that's why I mentioned groceries, for example. You have perishables, you have dry goods, frozen goods, etc. Mm. And normally it's people going, leaving back home from work mm. at a certain time they put the order and they instruct that at 5 30 i'll come to the picking station mm. and pick it up and i know for example amazon do that as well they have these various pickup stations yeah. um, dotted around dubai where where consumers yeah. can actually collect their stuff and well that, from an automation point of view um, it would make sense for these picking stations to be as automated as possible i'd yeah. imagine wouldn't it at the end it's a matter of software Logistics now is more about software than it is about forklifts or racks or conveyors. That's something that Span Group obviously provides. Well, out of 370, we are now 105 in technology mm. and 150 in service. We're sure. still a good forklift and rack company, but again, we are also a service and a software organization. Mm. Okay. You've said before um, that service and technology is the future of yes. the logistics industry. Yes. Um, why is that? Well, technology, because it's getting more complex. Besides fragmentation, there is speed, multiple destinations, multiple pickup points. People talk about the last mile. So they started talking about the first mile. I would rather talk about the first 15 miles. In some of these e-commerce fulfillment facilities, the picker walks sorry, not 15 miles, but 10 miles, 15 kilometers on average a day. So it's, uh, it's complex, it's fragmented, it has to be quick, uh, it relies significantly on uh, human resources. It, there's, there's only software and technology that can make sense of this and really manage it. it it's now it's beyond a manager's decision to ship 10,000 orders to 5,000 destinations a day. It has to be automated. And what about um, materials handling Middle East, uh, of course, returning for the umpteenth time, yes. many, many times you've been at the show. Um, what are you bringing to the show this year? And um, second question, who would you like to meet? Yeah. Uh, what we're bringing at the show, like every time we try to come with something new. At the show this year, you will see smart trolleys, at the show this year, you will see the first simulator. You will see uh, people think about simulators for pilots to train them to drive an aircraft. Mm. We're bringing our first simulator to this part of the world to train people how to drive forklifts. Resources are rare, accidents are happening. We have to, and we're asking more from our forklift drivers, they have to be properly trained. What best than a simulator where they can do all the mistakes they want over the first few days mm. before we put them behind the steering wheel. Okay. We are also introducing a new concept in storage called Storganizer mm -hmm. that converts within pilot tracking two pilot locations into 90 peak locations. Imagine, we always talk fragmentation. Small locations, small pieces. We talk speed, so we can't afford to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. Imagine that instead of two SKUs, each sitting on a pallet, remaining, keeping the same infrastructure, we install a system called the Storganizer, and you have 90 pick faces. You have 90 different SKUs. So efficiency of space and quick turnaround of your orders. Mm -hmm. We've already installed the first organizers in Lebanon, in Qatar, and in the Emirates. What particular industries were these? E-commerce. I would really invite e-commerce companies and distribution companies who are having electronic commerce or looking seriously into e-commerce mm. to come to the material handling show this mm. year. You will see something different besides racks and forklifts. Mm, mm, mm. And so the store organizer, store organizer, sorry, is, is obviously perfect 
for, for the likes of e-commerce companies, retailers that have an online presence, uh, distributors that have online presence, anyone that has an online presence, the store organizer is perfect for their solutions, for their requirements, rather. It addresses the issues of uh, traveling time and traveling uh, density, as well as storage. And is this um, the, with the simulator that's with Jung Heinrich? Is that in yes. partnership with Jung sure, Heinrich? Yeah? Sure. And the store organizer, is that uh, your own proprietary software? Or it's a collaboration it's a between us and the, and the US company. How confident are you about the future of your business and the warehousing landscape in the future? For people who are preparing uh, themselves for, for the future, the future looks bright. Mm. The key word now in our industry is courage. You have to be courageous. You have to dare. Okay, you cannot be foolish, but it's, this is the time to dare. We, we are here to stay. I personally am very much excited about mm. the years to come. Mm. As far as the show, I look forward to the show. It has always been good to us. And we we'll do our uh, diligence and make sure that we have on our stand something interesting for the people to see. Well, thank you very much uh, welcome, for your time. And uh, good luck. And we look forward to seeing your materials. My pleasure. Yeah.